In section 1.3, we will continue our discussion on functions and their graphs. We have an example here, and we want to be able to determine the interval over which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So in the first situation, so we want to move, as we move from left to right, we see that the function is increasing as we move from left to right. The function is increasing. It increases up to this point, which is a negative 1. So the function is increasing on the interval from when x. So increasing, the function is increasing on the interval from a negative 1 to a negative infinity, all right, is increasing. At this point, it begins to decrease. So the function is decreasing on the interval from a minus 1. So it's decreasing from here to here. So it's decreasing on the interval from minus 1 to 1. And at 1, notice what happens. It begins to decrease, excuse me, increase again. So again, it's increasing on the interval from 1. And it continues to increase as we move from left to right. So it increases on the interval from 1 to infinity. Okay, the next example, looking at the graph, let's use the graph to identify the relative maximum and the relative minimum for the graph of a particular function f. So we recall the definition of relative max or local maximum. So as we look on the graph and if we Consider an open interval about this point, and the point happens to be minus 1. So if I look at an open interval about this point, the largest value of the function in that interval occurs at a negative 1. So we call a negative 1, x is equal to a negative 1, a relative maximum. Likewise, if you look at an open interval about 1, we see that at 1, the function takes on its smallest value in that open interval. So we say that the function f has a relative minimum at x is equal to 1. In the next example, we want to determine if the function h of x is equal to x to the fifth plus 1, is even, odd, or neither. So let's see. Let's recall, in order to make a determination, we need to recall the definition of what it means to be an even function. An even function, by definition, is that if we evaluate the function at a negative x and we obtain f of x, then I know the function is even. This is the definition of what it means to be even. To be an odd function, if I evaluate the function at f of minus x, this is going to be negative f of x. All right, so that's how we will make our determination. So what do we need to do? We actually need to then find h of minus x. All right, h of a negative x is going to be the definition of negative x to the fifth plus one. A negative x to the fifth is going to be a negative x to the fifth plus one. And now let's compare this with the definition. Let's check it with the definition. It's clearly not an even function 
because h of a negative x is not h of x. And h of a negative x is not the negative of the function h of x. So what we're going to conclude here is that the function h of x is neither um, even nor, so it's neither. Let's consider um, two more examples in making a determination as to whether a function is even, odd, or neither. So in the first example here, f of x is equal to x squared plus 6. So let's see. Again, I need to find f of minus x. So if I find f of minus x, I get a negative x squared plus 6. A negative x squared, here we have to square the negative x. So that's a negative time. So that's going to be x squared plus 6. So it appears then that f of minus x is equal to f of x. So what do we conclude? We conclude that f of x is even. It's an even function. In the next example, g of x is equal to 7x cubed minus x. So in order to make a determination, we need to find f of, excuse me, g. G of a negative x. So we have g of a negative x is 7 times a negative x cubed minus, be careful here, minus x. But x is a negative x. So what do we have here? 7 times a negative x. A negative x cubed is a negative x. So I get a negative 7x cube. And a minus times, a minus here is going to be a positive x. So we get g of a negative x is a negative 7x cubed plus x. So therefore we can see that in this case it's clearly not even, neither is it what? Odd. So we say Let's see. So is g of minus x minus g of x? Let's see. So here's g of x. g of x is 7x cubed minus x. Now let's take the negative of that. What do I get? I get a negative 7x cubed plus x. So it looks like g of x is indeed odd. So it's, it's an odd function. The next example covers piecewise defined functions. So what we want to do is to graph this piecewise defined function. All right, and we know the piecewise defined function is a function in which you have two or more equations over a specified part of the domain. So in this particular function, for this part of the domain, the function is defined to be 3. So you can think of all of the numbers less than or equal to a negative 1. So if x is indeed less than or equal to a negative 1, y is going to be 3. So let's, in our graph, so let's go over to a negative 1. This is a negative 1. So if x is negative 1, y is going to be 3. 1, 2, 3. The graph... So at a negative 1, we said that y is 3. For any value of x less than or equal to negative 1, the value of the function is going to be 3. Here's 3. All right. So a negative 2 is going to be 3. Negative 3. Any number less than 3. So basically, it's a horizontal line through 3. So I'm just going to draw this horizontal line through 3. So this would be the graph of the first, first part of the function, the piecewise defined function. f of x is equal to 3, 
all values of x less than or equal to negative 1. Now let's move on to the second definition here. So f of x is equal to x minus 2 if x is greater than minus 1. So when x is minus 1, here's minus 1, but we want values greater than minus 1. So let's assume that if x were minus 1, I would have minus 1 minus 2, which would be minus 3. So at minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So at minus 1, if we had included a minus 1, the value would be a negative 3. But since a negative 1 is excluded, so I'm going to have to put for the value of y is equal to negative 3, I'm going to have to put an open circle at a negative 1 because negative 1 is not included. It says for all values of x greater than a negative 1. So at a negative 1, we have an open circle. And now for values greater than a negative 1, for instance, 0. All right, so at, when x is 0, we have 0 minus 2, which is minus 2. So when x is equal to 0, we have a minus 2. Y is minus 2. X, when x is equal to 1, we have 1 minus 2, which is a negative 1. So at 1, we have a negative 1. And you see that this is a linear equation, so you would expect when we connect the points here, it's going to be um, a line. Uh, let's do one more. So at 2, when x is 2, we have 2 minus 2, which is 0. So when x is 2, y is 0. So we're going to connect the points. So this becomes the graph. This is the graph of the piecewise defined function given by this definition. In the next example, we want to, in other words, we really want to compute the difference quotient. This is the difference quotient. All right, this is called the difference quotient. So given a function f of x, we actually want to find that difference quotient. But the first thing we need is the function in part a, f of x plus h. Because once we get f of x plus h, then we're going to subtract from that f of x and divide by h. So let's, let's do that. So the first part is to find f of x plus h. So f of x plus h means that we want to replace x in the definition with x plus h. Be very careful, it's x plus h and not x. So we have minus 2 times x plus h squared plus x plus h plus 5. So let's simplify this. So we have minus 2 x plus h squared is x plus h times x plus h, which you would get what? x plus h times x plus h is going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h plus 5. So that's the f of x plus h. All right? So that's part A. So now let's compute this difference quotient. So we have, so this is going to be f of x plus h. So f of x plus h is just this, all right? So we can actually, let's just put this there. Minus 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared 
plus x plus h plus 5. That's the f of x plus h. So minus 2, minus 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h plus 5. I want to subtract from this f of x. But what is f of x? This is f of x. So in parentheses, I have a negative 2x squared plus x plus 5. Very important that you put this part in parentheses because you're subtracting this f of x. All divided by h. Now it's just a matter of simplifying. You want to now want to simplify. Simplify the expression. All right, so let's simplify. We have a negative 2 times x squared is a negative 2x squared minus 4xh, that is a negative 2, times 2xh is a negative 4xh. A negative 2 times h is a negative h squared is a negative 2h squared plus x plus h plus 5. Now minus a negative f of x is going to be removing the parentheses. A negative times a negative, so we have a positive 2x squared. A negative times a positive x is a negative x. And a negative times a positive 5 is going to be a negative 5. All divided by h. Now we need to simplify the numerator. We have a negative 2x squared and a positive 2x squared. Cancels out. We have a negative x and a positive x. They cancel. A positive 5 and a negative 5 cancels. So that leaves us with a negative 4xh minus 2h squared plus h, all divided by h. And now we want to simplify. Well, we can simplify what? Well, we can factor the numerator. All right, so if I factor the numerator, I can take out h, so that leaves me with a negative 4x minus 2h plus 1 all divided by h. So the h cancels with this h, and I'm left with a negative 4x, a negative 2h, plus 1. So this represents the difference quotient for the function f of x is equal to a negative 2x squared plus x plus five.